Here's a custom belt that I'm in the process of building right now, and I'm at the point where it's time to line it. So add an extra layer of leather on the back side of this belt in order to make it a double layered belt instead of just being a single layered belt. Now there's nothing wrong with single layered belts, but I personally line almost every single belt that I build. I feel like double layered belts tend to last longer. Some people don't like them, but that's generally how I build most of the belts that I make. So it's a very simple process. I'm gonna run you through that really quick. Okay, before we go on, I wanna to talk to you about the leather itself for a second. This is just a plain belt blank. This is what all of my belts start out looking like, and it's stripped off of a piece of Herman Oak. That's what I like to use is Herman Oak vegetable tan leather. And this particular piece is 9-10 ounces in thickness, and that is what I build almost every single one of my belts out of, is a 9-10 ounce body, and then I will line it with a 3-4 ounce liner. There's no written rule that says you have to use a specific piece of leather for what you line your belts with. However, whatever you choose, I like to aim for a total thickness of anywhere from 12 to 14 ounces. For a belt, a good weight is 10 to 14 ounces, anywhere in there is good, but I like to aim for 12 to 14. I feel like that's a really solid weight for a belt. There's nothing wrong with using two pieces of five, six ounce. You can even go seven, eight ounce body with a four or five liner. It's all up to you. However, if you're doing any type of filigree work or plugging a belt, so adding an extra piece of material in the middle of the two pieces of leather, then you really might consider using two pieces of 5.6 or something else like that because especially when you're doing any type of filigree work, cutting out pieces of 9.10 is a lot more difficult than cutting out pieces of 5.6. So just something random to consider. Whichever way you go about it, when you build a double layered belt, they're generally gonna hold up a lot longer. Regardless of if you're building a single layered belt or a double layered belt, you almost always want to thin this part of the leather down. This is where the buckle is going to connect. And so you want to thin this down to make sure that everything fits properly and it's not going to be too bulky to fold over and attach the buckle and it could even get too thick to attach the billet end in the buckle. This is usually one of the first things that I do before I ever even start to draw or tool, but for this video I saved it for now. I'm going to show you how to skive or thin this part of the belt down with this basic safety beveler. This is just one from Tandy. I do have a brand new blade in here. This is a very, get out of here fly. This is a very simple tool, but it can be difficult and tricky to use at times, especially when there's tight grain on leather like this. Hopefully it comes out pretty nice and easy. So I have a little mark here just telling me where I want to start. It's usually a good idea if you have like a piece of glass or even on your granite stone, if you have one of those to use this on that instead of just a table like this, because once you get to the end, it, this can catch and dull your blade. It's probably not a good idea with this new blade, but we're gonna do it like this anyways. So. To do this, you just kind of want to hold the knife like this and kind of hold it at an angle right here. And if you spray water on this and wet it down just a little bit, it will help as well. But for now, we're just going to try to do it like this. So start here at my TIG and then just, especially with a brand new blade, it's a lot easier to dig into that leather and kind of rip at it, I guess. See, well, you might have not seen, but my blade kind of jumped and caught into that table. So if you got your granite stone, mine has stickers all over it, which isn't the smartest thing. Uh, so I usually just dull my blades out, whatever. Now, when you are doing this part of the process, you kind of, you don't want to take it down super, super thin, but you want to take enough off to where it's maybe sitting at about anywhere from four to six ounces. That way you still have a little bit of thickness and body in this because you do want it to be kind of sturdy right here because that buckle will add a little bit of pressure to the leather. So you want it to be strong, you just don't want it to be too thick. Now that I've thinned this part of the belt down, we're ready to glue this piece of leather to this piece of leather. This is my liner. Again, it's just three, four ounce Herman Oak natural veg tan. You can use whatever you want, but this is what I use. I always cut my liners around a quarter of an inch bigger than the belt body itself. So this particular belt is normal width, so one and a half inches wide, and this liner is around an inch and, a, an inch and three quarters wide. That way there's around an eighth of an inch overhang on each side. So when we actually go to stick this belt and the liner together, you don't have to be so careful about lining the edges up perfectly, and there's gonna be a little bit of overhang and we can just cut that off with a knife when we're finished. So always make your liners bigger than the body of the belt itself. As far as the adhesive that I'm gonna be using, I still just use barge all-purpose contact cement. I know there are a lot other options out on the market and a lot safer options, but this is what I still rock with. 
and they do make barge makes their own thinning solutions but i just use regular acetone from the hardware store to keep it thin it works just fine here is my glue pot that i keep my glue in it gets a little sticky as you can see i like to keep my glue on the thinner side but not runny thin if that makes sense one quick tip as you can see there's a lot of glue built up around the lid of this Anything that's going to get a lot of adhesive or glue on it, if you would just take some Vaseline and rub it on the rim of that and maybe inside the lid, it'll help that glue from sealing that lid down and it will just come undone really easy. You can do that with your glue pot or whatever else that's going to be coming into contact with glue or other adhesive. Something else that I try to pay attention to is which part of the liner I'm going to attach the tip of my belt to for this liner. It's going to be this end. I'm just going to write that on there to remind myself. And that's just because the grain on the liner is a little bit tighter right here and I want that to be on the tip of the belt because that's generally where the belt is going to take the most wear and tear and abuse as it gets used. And so I want to make sure that this is, I usually only work with the bend section of a hide and so I want to make sure for me that this is going to come from the butt end of the hide if that makes sense. So the butt end is usually where the grain is going to be most consistent. and. So I like my tip to go connected to that. Same with the belt. When you cut your belt blank and you start to tool it or work on it, I like to make sure that the tip of my belt is going to be coming from the butt end of the section of the hide. Now that we're ready to glue, we'll go ahead and just start with the liner here. Um, I usually like to do two layers of glue on both the liner and the main body of the belt. Two layers is usually fine. If your glue's acting weird, then you might need to do three, but two layers is usually perfect. The way this contact cement works is you want to, after you apply it, you want to let it set for a second and let both the liner and the body or whatever you're gluing, let both sides of the glue get tacky and then stick them together. That way they get a good bond. just long enough to where it's tacky on both sides. So now when we stick them together, they should get a really nice bond and not come apart. This is something that you wanna be very careful. Take your time and make sure you get it right on the first try because it's not fun trying to pull that glue apart and re-glue something or even just having to restart a project because you screwed it up. So take your time because once this stuff touches together, it's usually really, really hard to get it apart. So for example, I have my liner laying down on the table and I usually like to keep it flat and then take the body and work it down the liner. You want to make sure that however you do it, keep one side flat. Don't let it bow up on you because if you get a little crinkle in there right in the middle, it's hard to get out. It's really annoying. So again, just take your time throughout this. Make sure you get it right the first time. There's a few different ways to go about doing this. I've actually seen some people lay the body flat and then take the liner and actually like kind of stretch the liner out as they put it on there. If you know who Clayton Moore is, you follow him on Instagram, he has this little contraption set up where it's like a wheel and the liner is wrapped around the wheel and then he wraps the body around the liner. So that way when it's glued together, it's already in that shape like it's gonna be used. And so anyways, if you know who that is, uh, or if you don't know who that is, go check out Clayton Moore on Instagram. He's one of the better makers out there right now. But again, there's just a few ways to go about that, about this process, but this is how I do it. So with my liner laying flat, I'm going to take the main body of the belt. And as you can see right here on the tip where I wrote tip, I'm going to make sure that I grab the tip of the belt and I'm going to start right here and just slowly work my way down this liner, connecting the two. I like to kind of wrap it up in my hand just to get control of it because if you let this start getting all wild, it can just accidentally slip and touch down here and get stuck and then that's a big problem. 
So kind of just wrap it up in your hand, slowly put it on here where you want it to go. And then once you get that tip started, you can kind of unravel it and just slowly lay it down on there and work it, making sure that you're keeping a pretty even amount of feather on both sides of the body. And that'll keep it pretty straight in the end. Until you get right there at the very end. Now it's pretty easy from here. Immediately after I have the body and the liner attached, I just want to kind of go through and press down and just make sure that everything came into contact like it should and is glued together. And I also am going to actually take a little flat hammer and hammer this together here in a minute just again to make sure that everything is connected. Flip it over. If you have one of those little roller deals, then you can roll this and make sure that it is all good. Speaking of my tooling block with stickers all over it, here it is. So again, just take a little flat hammer and... You don't want to hit it too hard and start smashing your tooling designs or knocking antique out, but just give it a little tap, again, just to make sure that everything is connected and glued together good. Especially along the edges, you want to make sure that the edges are touching all the way through. And if you do notice that you start to leave hammer marks, just take another piece of leather that you don't care about hammering up and leaving marks on, put it on top of it, and then hammer it like that. That's a sure way to make sure that you don't leave any marks on your leather. All right, we've made it to the sewing machine. It was pretty late when I was filming the last part of this video last night, so I did end up letting this belt just sit in the shop overnight to let that glue set up. The only thing I ended up doing off camera is I have oiled the liner, just a thin coat of needs foot oil. I usually like to do that before I sew, just because it will help that needle go in and out of the leather a little bit easier and help that thread lay down better. But if you've watched my buck stitching video, you know that at this point, if I'm going to be lacing a belt, I would trim the liner, slick the edges, and then buck stitch it. But if I'm just gonna be sewing it up like I'm doing right now, then I go ahead and leave that liner on there. I'll sew it up and then trim it off and do the edges afterwards. This is my Cobra Class 26 sewing machine. I absolutely love this piece of machinery. It's perfect for the work that I do, but I'll probably do a more in-depth review over that in the future. For now, let's just go ahead and get this belt sewed up. I like to start sewing from the very end of the belt where the leather's gonna fold over. That way, when I double over my stitches and back stitch when I get finished, all of that will be hidden underneath the belt and will never be seen, so just another short tip. Okay, now that we have it stitched up, we're ready to trim this excess liner now. I personally like to just use these simple rotary blades. You can pick them up at Hobby Lobby or most other craft stores. They're very easy to use, simple, easy to handle, and they're fairly sharp if you keep a new blade in it and the blades aren't that expensive. But I'm just going to start here at the tip, slowly cut the corner away from the main body of the belt, and then once you get right here, it's just a straight shot. Just keep this blade as vertical as you can and run it down the main body of that belt and trim that liner. You want to be careful, don't get all wavy and crooked, try to keep it as straight as you can and also don't slip and cut through the main body because that would obviously be bad. Um, keep your fingers out of the way, other than that it's pretty straightforward so let's just go ahead and get this liner trimmed.
And that's about all there is to it. We now have a double layered belt. The only thing you have to do from here is finish the edges and punch some holes, but I'll save all of that for a future video. As you can see, the belt has some nice thickness and body to it now, and it should hold up really well for a long time. The inside is clean and finished looking instead of just being that hairy, grainy side of the leather. And since we use veg tan on the liner itself, if you wanted to, you could even take a swivel knife and add some extra designs on the inside of the belt. I've done that before, and it does add a nice touch to it. That's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any additional future video ideas you'd like to see, let me know in the comments section. Please like the video. And if you haven't already, go subscribe to the channel. You'll be notified any time I drop a new video, and that support means a lot to me. Thank you guys again, but until next time. Peace.